In this tutorial, we're going to look at bringing reef survey imagery into the reef cloud system for analysis by the reef cloud artificial intelligence algorithm. Before we do that, the first thing is to arrange our photographic data in the correct way. Reef cloud needs to have data vertically orientated and about a meter and a half off the bottom. So for example, we're looking at a survey here that was done in January by our Port Moresby team at Gubba Gubba. And during that survey, the team used three cameras, TG6, 1, 2, and 3. And I've gone through all that imagery and I've collected out the images which are suitable for analysis by Reef Cloud. That is, they're vertically orientated about a meter and a half off the bottom. Um, so to upload these images to Reef Cloud, it's important that only vertically orientated images are included. To bring them into Reef Cloud, we are going to need to specify which location the images came from. And because it's a geotagging camera, we have image information specified in the images themselves. In the ACDC system, we can tell that by the small icon here. You can also access the information through your standard Windows browser. In this case, you select a file, right click, go down to properties, and then within properties, you can hit details and scroll down here. And if, this, if the image does have position location data, you'll see it here. The idea then is to extract that information and convert it into decimal degrees, which is what Reef Cloud needs. And the easy way to do that is to use Google Earth. So we'll go to Google Earth. And I know the reef that we're looking at is roughly this one here. So I'm going to create a place mark. And I'll just put it roughly in the area. And we're going to call it Reef Cloud Survey. And you'll see my coordinate system at the moment is in decimal degrees. What we need to do is to change that into degrees, minutes, and seconds so that we can bring in the information from the image. So we're going to go to options here and change this to degrees, minutes, and seconds, apply, and then OK. If we come back to this Google Earth point now, right click, properties, we there have the um, latitude and longitude. So we want to make sure that that latitude and longitude roughly matches the, the latitude and longitude in the pictures. So we'll go back to our sample image. We have a latitude and longitude here. 485171. And we're going to edit it in here. And we have a longitude 264333. Okay. And there we go. So we know roughly this is where the team collected that information. It's on the back edge of the reef here on this reef called Mindarana. What we then want to do is then go back into our tools, two options, and change the coordinate system back to decimal degrees. Apply. OK. And then now when we have a look at our properties of our point, we can see the latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. So leaving that open, we go back to Reef Cloud. And within Reef Cloud, the system is arranged in a hierarchy. So a project is a whole set of data that you may have collected in a whole lot of different places, but using the same method. Within each project, you can then have sites. And these are obviously the places where you went to collect the data. And within each site, you can have a specific survey. And that may be, for example, a 50 meter transect where you took uh, 10 images. So to bring the data into Reef Cloud, um, we have already set up a project for the Sea Women of Melanesia. So when you have access, you will automatically come into this project. But within there, you need to first set up a site. And that's very easy with this site button clicked. Over here on the right hand side, you can hit add site. And then you go and input the information there. And 
and I've already done that so you can see I've put in a site already for Gubba Gubba and we can edit that site to view it and here's all the information that I already put in the site name the site code the position data and where it is we're on the back reef it's a barrier reef and it's in an exposed location the depth is three meters Papua New Guinea and these other bits of information about the location so now that we have a site we can then add a survey to that site and again it's pretty straightforward we go to surveys and we're going to go create a survey in our drop down menu for the survey site we have Gabba Gabba because we've created a site and this reef is Maidarana and it is going to be Transec 1 we'll put in the date January 23 TR1 for Transec 1 the depth is 3 meters Transect is number 1 the start date is the 12th I believe start time and we can check that off our imagery our start time was 1.30 so we're going to change this to 13.30 the collection method was we were on snorkel and we don't want to restrict the data so we submit and now in our surveys we can see that we should have a list of um, surveys for which we can upload information so here's our Gubba Gubba one we'll just refresh this to see if it brings in a new one yep okay so here's our one we just created My Dorana, January 23 Transit 1 we go across to here and we can have a little box called view or add images we click on that and we hit start uploading and we will browse to the folder that we want to be in which in this case is the January 2023 survey and we want all the reef cloud pics double click that and go upload and it says are you sure you want to upload all these pictures yes we do upload and hit upload and the process starts and it's going to do them four at a time until they're all uploaded after the upload has finished you should see the uploaded images here in the reef cloud system you should be able to scroll through and it's going to give you some information at the bottom 23 files selected 23 files uploaded no errors so then we can hit close and so then we see our survey in here with images in it now that we have images in reef cloud in our survey we can start classifying them using the reef cloud system and so we go to this icon here which is classify survey images and it will bring up the images from the survey that we have uploaded and you can see the information down the bottom here lets you know what you're looking at our site is Gubba Gubba our survey is Maidarana January Transit 1 and here's the actual image file name so we know exactly what we're looking at there's a couple of different ways you can look at these images you can look at it as a full image like this or you can go to these points and these points represent all of the green dots that you see on the full images so we'll start with a full image for the moment and the way ReefCloud works is we go through and we assign a value or we classify each one of these green dots according to this variable list down here on the right hand side and this is, this is a variable list that we have made for the Sea Women Survey Program so it has abiotic items such as dead coral and rock and rubble it has eight types of algae and it has 35 types of hard coral it's also got hydro corals invertebrates uh, soft corals and other things like leaves or plastic or camera shadow and so it's pretty straightforward what you do now is you go through and you click on each one of these 
points and you assign it a label. So for example, we'll start with this one here. Once you've clicked on it, it goes orange and then when it's orange, you can assign it a label. Now we know this is a Parides massive coral. And so we're gonna go down here to hard coral and we're gonna find Parides massive. And when the point turns blue, it means that we have assigned a value to it. And so you can see when you mouse over the point, it's going to tell you what reef cloud guessed that it was, and it guessed it was a Mariolinid massive coral. Um, and then it also shows you what the human, us, scored the coral as, and we correctly scored it as a Parides massive coral. So the idea is we go through now and score each one of the 12 dots on each picture and each picture will have those 12 dots laid over the top of it. The way the reef cloud system works is that once we have coded about one third of the dots in the whole photo sequence, the machine will actually learn what is under each point and it will start to guess increasingly correctly what is under each dot. The other thing that's worth noting is you can zoom into the, into the reef cloud image and so you can get very close and see exactly what's under each dot and, and you really want to be scoring really just what's under, specifically under the dot, once you've zoomed in a fair way. So that you can know what all these variables are, we've made a supporting uh, teaching resource, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, the Sea Women Reef Cloud Label Identification Guide. So every one of those labels that you saw in the Reef Cloud system has a definitive picture here so that you can check off and work out what each thing is. So all the different types of algae are in here and all the different types of corals. And so that's it. You go through and you classify as many of these points as you can. If you're uncertain, once you've done a certain number of them, you'll find that the machine actually starts to guess the identity of the point fairly easily. If you want to go back and change a point, that's no problem. You can come back here, for example, to this one that we already coded. And if we want to change that one, we just click it again and it goes back to orange, which means we can edit the code of that point. And that's it. Uh, once you've done that, you can, um, it will generate some really neat, uh, you can hit report here and it's going to generate some quite interesting statistics based on um, the information that you've coded into the image and the machine will do a pretty good job of guessing uh, what the rest of the things in the imagery are. Once you have all of your site survey data into the Reef Cloud system, then there's a couple of ways that you can look at the results up here under the dashboard. Uh, this just sort of gives a summary of everything that is in your particular project. So we're looking now at one of our projects from Yunbanun, Magnetic Island, and we've got eight sites, and we've so far uploaded 2,707 images, and we've classified nearly 20% of them. So we've still got a little bit to go. And here's a, an overall summary of coral cover, both our estimate, uh, the machine estimate, and then the human estimate. And you can click through here to the different sites, and you can see the estimates of coral cover for all the different sites just with the click of the mouse. The more detailed uh, information you can get down here in this left-hand menu under report. And so in this case, we've got our site. Let's go, say for example, to Fish Cove and we can change our group to hard corals. And then here the system has printed out a summary of the abundance of all the different sorts of hard corals that we've seen in the analysis. And again, there's the human estimate and also the model estimate in different colors. So you can see how well the artificial intelligence system is doing at uh, coding those points in the analysis and the more information that you give the system and the more points that you code uh, the better the system is going to get at um, analyzing those points. So that's uh, a couple of the ways that you can use the system to get some 
estimates of what's going on. You can export this stuff now. You can download it as a plot. Um, the other thing that you can look at is the validation of the model. And so basically, uh, this curve should start to stabilize once the reef cloud system is fairly confident that it's, it's getting things right. And you can see as we started scoring an increasing number of images, we're, we're up now hovering around an accuracy a little bit above 60% or about 70%. Um, and we probably want to get that up sort of closer to 80 or 90%. And it, and it will get there once we've scored perhaps about 30 to 40 or even 50% of the, of the images. So that's how to use the Reef Cloud system. There's, as you can see, there is um, guides, online guides to give you more information about improving the system. And under here, under the help section, um, there's a whole lot of online help that tells you how to use the Reef Cloud system. So good luck with it. And if you've got any questions, just email us uh, directly, info at coralseafoundation.net, and we will try and help you out as best we can. Thank you.